In this video, I'm going to share with you a roadmap for learning Vision OS development, which I believe is a very good skill set to learn for the coming future. By the end of the video, I hope to give you a good idea of what to learn so that you can build your own Vision OS apps and put it out into the market for the coming spatial era. And this roadmap comes from my own experience of learning Vision OS development, and I make an assumption, and that assumption is that you're a complete beginner. And if you're not a complete beginner, you could skip some of the steps, which I'll highlight as we go along. So let's start with step number one. So the first step is to learn iOS development. I don't believe there's a way around this if you really want to create powerful Vision OS apps. So I currently work as a software engineer, mobile software engineer specializing in iOS to be specific, and I was self-taught. And when I started my journey, I learned iOS development through a course part-time. And after I learned iOS development through a Udemy course, I started building my own ideas to put the skills into practice. Then I took up a part-time job and did some freelancing, combining both these learning and doing together was how I learned iOS development. And the exact skill set within iOS development is what I'm gonna lay out now. And when I say iOS development, it's composed of multiple skills that you might need to learn. So the first one would be the Swift programming language. It's a very modern, new, verbose, English-like programming language. That's a very good programming language for a beginner to learn as well. That's the language that could be used for iOS apps, iPad apps, Vision OS apps, Mac apps. Swift was introduced in 2014. It's not a very old language. It's not a very new language either. It's the main programming language that Apple markets these days. If you want to build Apple products, Swift is the first thing you need to learn. It is the core programming language used to build Apple products. After learning Swift, you would need to learn UI frameworks. So in the olden days, it was the UI kit, storyboards and all that stuff. And in these days, Apple raised a new UI framework called Swift UI. And Swift UI is what Vision OS is built up on as well. So the whole Vision OS operating system and the framework itself is written on Swift UI and it's a framework released in 2019 and it's exactly what Apple suggests that we use to build our apps and Swift UI is highly compatible with Vision OS development and it's really the recommended way to go for UI frameworks. So Swift, Swift UI will give you a good grasp of building UI and adding logic to it. Now, if you want to add more depth and power to your apps, you would obviously need to at one point use iOS frameworks, right? Like say AB Foundation for adding music audio processing or Reality Kit and AR Kit for AR apps, which I'll come to soon. And different other frameworks say like persistence frameworks like core data for storing data. You might need to use different kinds of frameworks to make your app really powerful and useful. So you would need to get familiar with Apple frameworks and how they are used. So Swift, Swift UI and Apple frameworks, when you combine all of this in conjunction with the basics like learning how to use Xcode IDE for building these apps and some other skills as well, when you combine all of this together, you will be able to build truly powerful iOS apps, mobile apps. And this is a very good foundation to have before you start learning the Vision OS stuff, which I'll come to soon. So this stuff, learning iOS itself is what I did first. And this stuff for me took about four to six months doing part-time while I was doing my PhD. And what I would recommend now is that for anyone who has a day job and who is a complete beginner to programming, it will probably take eight months to one year, I believe, to truly become proficient. For someone who has some programming experience, like very basic level, it might take like four to six months to gain mastery over this. So that's step number one, learning iOS development by learning Swift UI, Swift, native iOS frameworks, and some other skills needed to build a fully functional iOS app that you can put it out in the market. So that's the first step I would recommend. Now, before going to the next step, I want to take a pause and ask you if you are planning to buy a Vision Pro headset or not. Because if you are planning to buy a Vision Pro headset, as pricey as it is now, then you can skip the next step and move on to the last, the third one. But if you're not planning to buy a Vision Pro headset because it's too expensive or whatnot, then this step is the right step for you. And this step is learning mobile AR. And the main reason why you want to learn mobile AR next and not jump straight into Vision OS is because it's the exact same skill set used for mobile AR that you apply for Vision OS development too. It's the exact way of thinking spatially, it's the exact frameworks even, Reality Kit, AR Kit, it's really the same thing, just with a few more additions. So if you're not planning to buy a headset and you want to learn the skill set of building for Vision Pro once it becomes cheaper, then mobile AR is the right step to go next, which is what I personally did in my journey as well. After I learned iOS development, I moved to mobile AR. 
And what do I mean by mobile AR? It's to learn Apple frameworks like Reality Kit, AR Kit, and the AR frameworks Apple provides to build AR apps. So Reality Kit, you can think of it's like the front end. It's like the game engine that renders the 3D stuff into the real world. And AR Kit's like the back end which does all the computer vision stuff to recognize and understand the real world. So that's mobile AR, put it very concisely, right? And the other skill you need to learn here, obviously, is 3D itself, how to create 3D assets or get 3D assets online and different ways of doing it. And also the fundamentals of what a 3D model consists of, like mesh materials, shaders, when you want to use them, and etc. So all this stuff comes under the AR bit. It introduces you to think spatially, design spatially, and understand the fundamentals of 3D modeling which will really help you think more creatively around how you want to build your app. That's mobile AR. AR frameworks in combination with learning the basics of 3D. So me personally, that's the next step I took. And once I took this step, I started freelancing with my skill set here. That even made me more of a powerful iOS developer because it's an extra framework that you learned. And because you learned all the iOS stuff before, picking up mobile AR becomes relatively easier. If you had done the other way, jumping straight to mobile AR, it would be more difficult because it's always better to know the fundamentals and build from there, right? So that's step number two, learning mobile AR, especially if you don't plan to buy a Vision Pro headset. Now, step number three becomes really easy if you've covered the previous two steps, learning iOS and learning mobile AR, because you have by now all the skill set you need to build for step three, which is essentially learning Vision OS development. So the previous steps, we learned how to build iOS apps and we added mobile AR on top of that. And now the skill sets that we have by now, things like Swift, Swift UI, learning how to use iOS frameworks, especially the 3D frameworks like Reality Kit and AR Kit, in combination with how to use 3D assets and manipulate them. If you have all this covered, this is exactly the same skill set that you use for Vision OS development. Vision OS uses Swift UI and Swift, and the native iOS frameworks, you use them to add flesh to your Vision OS apps. So currently I'm building a Vision OS app. I can't tell you how easy it is to pick up the whole framework because of the previous two steps that I've covered. If you have those foundation in place, it really becomes easy to iterate quickly and build products quickly. So my product, my Vision OS app, I'm hoping to complete maximum in two months during part-time, if not in a month. And what really helped to do this quickly was the previous two steps, essentially. So in Vision OS, like I said, it's the same frameworks that you use before plus some extras. Vision OS, essentially the extra things that you would learn would be things like windows, volumes, and spaces. Windows are where you place your 2D content, volumes, the 3D content, and spaces are for completely immersive experiences. And for all the 3D stuff in windows and volumes and spaces, you use Reality Kit to render stuff and you use Swift, Swift UI to build the UI for windows and Swift UI and the Reality Kit stuff talks to each other very well. So like I said, it's the same skill set that you learned from the previous two steps, just with a few more additions that you need for Vision OS, more of the spatial way of thinking. Those are the three steps essentially, and in this video I've covered on a very high level and quite quickly how you could learn Vision OS development, and the best way to is put a roadmap around it and a strategy around it. Now, if you want more details around this roadmap, all the skill sets that you need, plus some other strategies around how to position yourself for a career or product development in this field, then you can check out my book, The Next Big Skill, which you can get for free from my website, www.realityunit.com, which I'll add in the descriptions below. In that book, I lay all this out in detail, plus a few more stuff that you'll find valuable for your journey. So do check that out if this was useful for you and if you wanted to get started in your spatial computing journey. And all this comes from my own experience and I hope those will be of value to you too.